Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The four critical steps to your customer acquisition journey. Now, congratulations. You're obviously listening to the last episode of season one, and this is episode number drum roll, episode number 50. It's been a journey. Um, you know, when we started this podcast, I didn't think I was going to be able to maintain the challenge that I put upon myself to have an episode coming out every single day. But um, we've afforded ourselves that feat. So I am virtually putting myself and you in the back uh, for having joined me throughout the last 50 episodes. Or if you've just joined me, well, welcome aboard. Now, um, as the saying goes, my name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Live Long Digital, where we help people uh, start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I digress. We don't just help people. We help coaches and consultants like yourself to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And our main tool that we use is what we call the online prosperity blueprint, which is the four critical steps that you need uh, in order to have a business that's profitable and, in, and enjoyable. And throughout my podcast content and everything else um, that we put out there, I always um, refer back to the Online Prosperity Blueprint. So if you haven't gotten a copy of this um, uh, blueprint yourself, please uh, jump onto our website, www. Uh, livelongdigital.com.au forward slash blueprint. Now, obviously, the goal of every coach, consultant, and small business owner is to get more clients, customers, and also generate a whole lot more revenue and eventually grow their business. And I assume that is the goal that you are hoping to achieve your business. And that's the reason why you've stayed with us with all the 50 episodes that we have under our belt right now um, and watching and listening to some of our content that we put out there in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But you might be uh, listening right now and asking yourself, how do I achieve this goal? What is it that I should do in order for me to actually scale and grow my online business? Well, basically, let me tell you something. What you need is an actionable digital marketing strategy and a partner that will hold your hand and help you, um, you know, shorten the learning curve um, because we're always out here learning each and every single day what works and what doesn't and what works we keep and what doesn't we ditch, okay? So you're going to need these actionable digital marketing strategies that will actually work and they're proven to get you results so that you're not just spraying and praying with your marketing, but you're actually uh, doing stuff that helps you be, do, and have a happier existence. So you're going to need a detailed and a good uh, action plan. And that's what the Online Prosperity Blueprint is all about. A four-step system uh, that is designed to help you grow your business so you can thrive even if the economy is down. And that's a bold claim, knowing that we've also managed to do the same, um, you know, and get so many results, not only for myself as a digital agency, but also for our clients that are really experiencing uh, massive growth, even uh, outside of the pandemic. Now, if you listen closely to this uh, podcast, we're going to be walking you through the critical steps that your customers um, need to go through 
in order for them to actually have a good buying experience and also for you to have a repeatable process that you can use again and again in order for you to grow your business because if you can't repeat any of these things then obviously um, you virtually do not have a business now let me tell you something it's very rare for your customers to just stumble upon your product online and then simply maybe click buy or add to cart or just um, you know start following you willy-nilly you know in most cases people go through a very long audacious process um, you know or journey where they first of all maybe uh, had to search for something and along the journey on their way to going where they wanted to go they stumbled upon your content and obviously they're doing research on their own and then eventually they interact with the business and only later do they actually do pick up the phone and call you or actually make the purchase so it's no longer a straight and narrow road where you just put your stuff out there or you put your ads out there and people will click it and you know you can um, eventually enjoy uh, a pina colada uh, while on holiday in bali if things start opening up so if you're aware of this customer journey um, to buying your services and your products, then you are in a very good position to improve that experience along the way and even influence it. Because some people are just hoping that somebody will buy from them and they do nothing in order to bring those customers um, you know, further and a little bit quicker in order for them to buy from them. Um, I think it's Google that has mentioned that it takes up to 13, um, you know, zero moments of opportunity um, for somebody to actually start knowing, liking and trusting a brand. So those 13 opportunities could either be through a podcast like this, could either be through your social media content, could either be through a blog, um, could either be through a speaking engagement or through, um, you know, a referral after they've heard about your consulting, your training, or somebody, you know, gives them your information or they hear of your expertise because maybe you wrote a book and it's available on Amazon or they attend a gig that you are speaking at. And if you're not doing any of these things, um, first of all, you should be, but worry not, I will be giving you a step-by-step -step, uh, process that would actually take you from where you are. And I'm assuming people that are listening to this podcast have some sort of a business, a model that they're following and they're already earning a little bit of money, but we can take you up to $2 million within two years with this wildly controversial system that literally breaks every rule in the marketing playbook. So I want you to forget everything that you've learned and let me take you on a wild journey um you know on this uh, online prosperity blueprint that would leave you in a strong position to improve the bias experience when people are purchasing from you like i told you this is episode number 50 all right so we are always putting out content like this that is designed to help you um you know leverage uh your digital marketing activities so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and in this podcast i'll break down the major steps um you know in your business um you know custom acquisition journey and like i said this knowledge is definitely going to help you um figure out ways to actually optimize these milestones and convert users into uh buyers super quick okay so do you actually know what the your customer acquisition journey looks like have you ever stopped to think what are the pro the, you know the hoops that you make your customers go through in order for them to either call you uh, send you an email or inquire from you or are you just waiting um you know for people to beat a path to your door i mean obviously if you're good and if you're remarkable then obviously people will be doing that but if you're like any other coach or consultant that we work with um that is relying on uh, say word of mouth, then I think you need to change your strategy, especially this year. Okay. Because the buyer's journey is something that you need to influence. It's something that you need to be a part of and your customers need to actually know who they're dealing with because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Okay. So in simple terms, 
your customer acquisition journey includes the series of steps that they go through um, when your customer learns, first of all, about your brand and when um, they then uh, when they eventually buy from you. But however, many coaches, consultants and small business owners that we work with, they also think of the journey as going beyond the sale. OK, so we, your um, you, the journey doesn't end when your customer pays you for the first time because maybe depending on what your acquisition costs are you're going to need your customer to buy from you at least two to three times up until they're profitable because if you're getting high quality leads and you're putting in the work um you must be paying a really high acquisition cost but you will then recover it maybe on second purchase or third purchase. So obviously your customer acquisition journey does not just simply end at the first transaction, okay? And it can also include whatever retention strategies um, and given uh, methods that you use uh, to help your customers become ambassadors or create a community around your brand. I'll be talking about that as we go along. And it's also part of the online prosperity blueprint. So obviously, um, it is something that we help you be, do, and have a happier existence or a business that's profitable and enjoy uh, enjoyable. So the key to optimizing your customer acquisition journey is to actually create content and show it at the right time at the right place and i will be going through that um aspect so there are critical steps in your customer acquisition journey and he, i want you to note in this uh, podcast we're going to be looking at this journey from the perspective of you as a business person rather than the customer because the customer doesn't quite know where they are in the journey up until they probably made a purchase and they don't actually care because your product or service is not the only thing that they are looking at okay so these people you need to understand first of all who these people are, what they look like, and who actually needs your information and who is already buying the kind of goods and services that you are offering. What is their actual pain? What are they going through that really makes them want to work with you? Because I want to find out something from you. Does this actually sound like what you're going through in your business right now? Because you're spending most of your days maybe working isolated by yourself on a computer in a dark room or on your kitchen table because COVID displaced you from working in an in a office or you know a paid office environment? Or do you spend the last moments on your pillow at night worried about how you're going to get clients or are you actually feeling the pinch of the raising ad costs because people are now jaded, um, you know, with all the marketing messages that they're receiving? Or the worst thing is, are you actually afraid that if we get yet another lockdown, your business is not going to survive? So this is how I know I have a slight idea of who the podcast listener is and who my ideal audience is. So that's why when I put out a podcast like this, I can literally grab you by the throat, especially with the content. You know why? Because it, it seems like I'm in your head. It seems like I understand you completely. Okay. And from the perspective of a buyer or you as a customer, Oh, your customers, the their journey sort of looks like this. They become aware of your brand, okay? This is the awareness stage. Here, the buyer identifies the problem. They know what their pain is. They look at um, solutions and figure out what might be the service or product that might help them alleviate that pain and what is the actual payoff that they're looking for. So your content needs to be along the journey to show them that you can actually help them by actually helping them. And then pretty much once they identify themselves as um, the right kind of person with the right kind of pain, who your product or service can help them, um, you know, uh, get rid of that pain, they start considering you as the actual provider. So there's different content that you would put um, you know, in front of them, this can be reviews, this can be testimonials, this can be any case studies that will help them consider you, um, you know, as a rightful provider for their 
um, um, you know, problems that, you know, for you to solve the problem that they're going through. And your customer starts doing the research on ways to resolve this problem. Some people are not even problem aware, but if you bring it across to them, people always assume that if you show them a solution to a problem they didn't know they have, they definitely would start trusting you because you have already understand where they were before they knew it themselves okay and then pretty much after this they go to the decision stage where they actually are comparing either vendors or they're comparing um, providers um, and solutions and then they'll pick the one that works for them either financially convenience or um, you know relate re relationship wise okay so do they feel like they uh, can connect with you and your message and everything else that comes along with it so this is why you constantly have to be telling people your story because they then can pick up from there whether or not they can work with you. The reason why this is important is because each and every one of us, our training, our information, our expertise or whatever we can speak, that is all uh, stuff that's out there. The only unique differentiator is our stories what and our experiences. This is where people would say, hey, wait a minute, this guy came from Africa and... Um, um, you know, now he's running a successful business. Maybe uh, he can understand because you know why he knows what it feels like to come from the bottom. And depending on your story, it then differentiates you from the other players out there. So never forget uh, to consistently, um, you know, be uh, relating, creating and relating to your audience. However, here you also want to consider the customer's acquisition journey to be a framework that would also help you understand the progress a customer is making, you know, uh, getting to know, like, and trust you and becoming loyal to you. If you can control and influence that journey, then you can control money towards, um, you know, going into your, your pocket. So you want to break down what this acquisition process would look like and make sure that you are creating content and you are available for them whenever they need you. Because once somebody understands their pain and knows there's a product or service for it, they're going to be looking for the payoffs. This is where you then go in and engage them and educate them on what it is that you're providing. And you actually inspire them to want more or be more because you can't sell to people that are uh, not inspired or people that don't inspire to be do and have a happier existence okay so this is where your outreach needs to be um very very strong and while you are reaching out to the people you also need to be providing them with utmost value the reason why i show up on this podcast every single day is so that i can be of value to you so that i can give you ideas inspiration and information before you even need it okay so i can help you connect with your problems and help help you connect with your pain so that you would understand that there's solutions out there and if you do happen to want what it is that we sell then definitely you can look to live long digital for your digital marketing needs okay and i really appreciate you for tuning in um you know especially the last 50 episodes but if you're just joining us this is the first step to your customer acquisition journey with us and i'm also going to be talking about what your first step needs to be in order for you to give your customers a direction or some sort of controlled pathway that they can follow and they feel like they're progressing or actually solving their problem while you're leading them to what your solution or what your product is okay so you need to take steps to reach out to these customers who haven't heard from you a lot of uh, coaches and consultants depend on word of mouth they think that people already know who they are yes of course some of your customers are not sleeping every single day talking about how good your services are and a lot of them are just stopping everyone they meet um on their way to work telling them about how transformational your training is and that is happening for sure and that's the reason why you, your business has been profitable and you don't need any of these suggestions or ideas that we're 
am giving out to you in this podcast. But if that's not true, or if it doesn't even sound remotely close to what you are having, the first step that you need to do is to actually outreach to people so that people understand of your existence, okay? And people would actually appreciate it because not only are you just reaching out to them to sell to them, but you're reaching out to them in order to help them solve their problems, okay? And you want to make it the first time that your target audience actually learns about your brand. So you want to make sure that you've identified this target market because you only have one opportunity to make a lasting impression. Okay, so you reach out to your target audience with either inbound or outbound marketing strategies. So inbound is when people obviously have heard about you and they reach out and they call you. And outbound is my either email or, um, you know, cold calling, um, you know, businesses that might be right for your services or something like that. Or you can actually use blog posts or you could do ads or you can uh, utilize social media in order to reach people that are probably not yet aware of the existence of your brand and how you can help them solve um, their problems. And the most important thing that you should focus on here uh, on this stage is really identifying the right kind of audience because spraying and praying with your marketing is just going to be a waste of everybody's time because people do not listen to marketing that is not directed at them. Do you understand what I just said in the last five seconds? All right, because if you're speaking a different language, your audience would never pick up on what it is that you're saying. So always focus on a clear buyer persona and reach out to them at the right place with the right content and the right attitude. And um, let's say you're a coach or consultant and you're reaching out to people on TikTok. It might not be the right place for your ideal audience okay um but if you've identified that you know you can you know relate your message in that a sort of uh environment then maybe that's that would be good for you if you're a coach or a consultant you really want to be working uh hard to provide value uh to an audience on linkedin uh and not try and spray and pray or just um weaken your brand by by finding yourself on different platforms that might not resonate with your ideal audience okay and once you've reached out to the people and you found out those uh that are ideal audience for your message um your potential customers want you to interact with them Okay, so by interaction, um, it is this stage of the journey where your potential customer actually starts interacting with your business uh, in earnest. So they may download an ebook, uh, they may join your email list, they may browse your product page um, or interact with your customer support just to ask more questions or they might frequent your about us page just so they can find out more information about who you are and what it is that you're going to be providing them. And at this stage, you just need to induce your customers to engage with your business as much as possible so create a free downloadable templates um, on your business build a podcast like this and you know really provide valuable content that people would um, miss you when you're gone and then create opt-in uh, pop-up forms to actually capture leads um, you know so that people can actually start receiving information from you uh, on demand or regularly and you can also offer maybe if you've got a free demo or free online workshops or courses or any other interactive content where your customers can actually get involved and get familiar with your brand and once you are um, you've got all of this in place. You need to start uh, converting these customers, uh, I mean, uh, you know, people into clients that pay, stay, and refer. Okay. And half of the time, you need to be doing this um, in an automatic fashion. But if your um, product or service requires you to literally 
um, hold people's hands um, in order for that conversion to happen. You need to make sure that you are available uh, to explain the last questions that your customers might have in order for them to make these purchases. Okay. So at this conversion stage, this is where you start solving people's problems and you're not selling to them. Okay. And you, you're putting out calls to action in the content that you are putting out there, because if you've given people enough of value, the only way they would want, um, you know, to thank you is to reciprocate, um, especially with, uh, maybe their credit card or to get more of what it is that you're, uh, selling to them. So it is at this conversion, um, stage, um, where your customers actually make a purchase, um, either on your website or on your online store, um, or over the phone or whichever, what your conversion process is. And you need to make this step as easy as possible. Um, for people to give you money, because if you put in hoops and you start asking a lot of questions or, um, you know, they, things are not clear about your guarantees or what it is that you're actually offering people, people would not, um, wait, um, until you've got it all figured out. Okay. So you need to have clear pricing structures or clear pricing tables. You need to enable um, maybe a social login so that people can just use their existing online accounts um, to check in without them having to maybe create copious amounts or give you copious amounts of information before they will trust you. And you want to be building a lot of trust by referring them to case studies or testimonials or information that um, validates that they're not being stupid, uh, choosing you as a provider over everybody else. And you want to put in as many guarantees as possible, especially you should give people their money back if you're not going to be uh, utilizing it. Like, like it is, it is we're in the 21st century where, you know, everything that you're doing is usually completely free anyway. You know, uh, you're not really paying for um, you know, you writing them an email or any of the other stuff that you're doing, um, in order for you, for them to reach out to you. So just give people back their money. Okay. And measure, uh, what's making people buy and track it so that you can do more of that. Um, and you can gain clarity over your, uh, efforts over in the long run. And pretty much when people have bought from you, create them into people that stay and refer. And this is where loyalty comes into play. You actually start connecting with um, people. And most of the time, this is where your actual journey with your customer starts when they've made a purchase um, either from your website or, you know, from, um, you know, what, however you make those conversions with them, you know, because it is well known that retaining a customer saves you a lot more money than finding a new one every time you want to make a sale. So once you have these customers, once you have these people um, with you, all you got to do is start creating more products so that they buy more from you instead of you trying to look for more customers um, to sell to. Okay. At the end of the day, um, you know, you, 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 it is much cheaper to retain customers than you uh, trying to find other people to sell stuff to. And once you've generated a lead and you've maybe made a sale, you need to increase the value of your sales and get um, customers to buy from you again and again. Like I mentioned earlier on, usually the first sale that you make is just to cover for your acquisition costs. Um, you know, all the time, money and effort that you've put in to get that customer to convert. Okay. The second sale or third sale is where your profit actually lies. Okay. So in order for you to have people buying from you again and again, you need to breed, build loyalty with them. Either you can create a loyalty program or an ambassador program so that you help returning customers, um, you know, favor you over your competition, either giving them discounts or, um, you know, access to new products before anybody else does. And you also, now that you've got their information, you no longer have to spray and pray with them. You need to send personalized emails to these customers and um, really show them that you're not just after their money or their wallet. You really want to help them uh, solve whatever problems they might be going through. And 
obviously, since you already know what they're going through, um, you want to make suggestions um, um, as to what other products they might need in order for them to get full value of your offerings okay and don't be afraid to upsell to them because there's no point in um selling toys with batteries not included and not telling people what sort of batteries they need and where to get them because at the end of the day that thing that you're selling them is not going to be helpful to them all right so at the end of the day you need to make and have a solid product you know so that your customers um stay with you and just be there for them don't just take their money and um ha hope they will figure it all out by themselves okay you need to actually use those customers to become ambassadors of yours so that they too can spread the word um about your uh services okay um you know for lack of a better term you need to get them to become sneezers so they can spread your idea virus okay so obviously this is a lot for you to grasp in like 30 minutes but i just wanted to wet your feet in order for you to understand what um the online prosperity experience is all about and since this is episode number 50 i just really wanted to you know bring it all together and explain to you how we can actually help you um you know grow your business in the next two years using our widely controversial system that we have called the online prosperity blueprint okay so once you've come to a point where you've built your customer loyalty and you've also created strategies to turn those customers into ambassadors you now have a business that's profitable and you actually enjoy working with these people because these are your ideas deal target audience and they're the people that um you want to keep uh creating for and relating to and these people become your ambassadors which then fuels your growth uh automatically so to speak and you can actually start doing this by really engaging these customers and asking them what more they want from you and what it is that they um what attracted um you to them or them to you and this is how you build your brand and, um, you know, literally have a business that is um, not affected by any closures or economy or COVID or whatever it is that might come in the future. OK, so if you're aware of each stage of this customer acquisition process, you can literally build the right content. Um, and present it at the right time, knowing what your customer could be going through uh, up until they um, you know, come to, um, you know, you come to their rescue. And I'm hoping that with this podcast that is um, closing off uh, season one of the online prosperity experience, you'll be able to pick out an all the important areas that you need to work within your business in order to engage your customers more. And I really want you to boost your customer experience and engagement. And I want you to grow your business and literally increase those sales and um the loyalty that you uh get from your customers you've worked far too hard to build this business and i really want you to start succeeding look at me i am celebrating your success already now i really want to take this time to thank you for tuning into this podcast and to season one of the online prosperity experience i really um wish to um be of value to you in season two um that is going to commence and um uh if there's anything that i can do to help you be do and have a happier existence so that your business can be profitable and enjoyable i really want to be the uh, podcast you go to so don't forget to share this podcast subscribe to this um channel and make sure that you are uh, tuning in because every single day we'll be dropping an episode uh, of the unique online prosperity uh, method that we use that has helped our customers be doing have a happier existence. I wish you all the best and I can't wait to see you in season two. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. 
As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.